Outside of the headlines on the airlines themselves, Warren Buffett did offer a pretty cautious view on the market right now. Optimistic in the long term, which is, of course, symbolic of what we heard from Buffett uh, for years here when we think about this rally. Uh, but moving forward, interesting to hear his thoughts on other sectors, of course, uh, Berkshire through Geico, a major player in the insurance space. And that was the focus of a large part of what he uh, weighed in on during the extravaganza. Again, I can't reiterate. You've got to go back and rewatch it. But when we look at what he was talking about on the insurance front, uh, interesting to hear him share his thoughts on Geico and the larger industry market as a whole. Of course, Geico, the second largest insurer out there uh, in the auto space. And when we look at what he said on that front, I want to play a quick snippet uh, of what he had to say about the insurance market and dive deeper into it uh, on the other side. Take a listen to what Warren Buffett had to say this weekend. At Geico, we're the second largest auto insurance company, and and different auto insurers are handling a sharing of the of the better experience with their policyholders in different ways. We our plan will deliver back two and a half billion, roughly or so, in in recognizing uh, the reduced uh, frequency of accidents during this period. What we don't know is how long this will continue. I mean, people want to drive their cars still, but uh, conditions have reduced that driving dramatically, obviously. Now, we have instituted a program that runs saving people money for six months, and, and, and so far, other people have largely been two months, but some of them have given a little more for those two months than than we get per month. Our total is the greatest uh, uh, at, at two and a half billion. And uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, we and all the others in the industry, it's not just Geico, we've also, uh, and insurance commissioners in many cases, I believe have required it, but we have, uh, we, we give people more time to pay if they aren't paying and if they cancel their policy or if they don't end up paying us, we've in effect giving them, giving them free insurance during that period. And, and the delay in payments is obviously increased. Delay of payments on, if you got a shopping center getting rent, if the delay in payments is what happens during a period like this. Uh, and that will be a significant cost to us. We don't know how significant will be. There will be more uninsured motorist, motorist driving, and they cause a disproportionate amount of accidents. So there you go. Uh, free insurance as well as record uncertainty. When we look at it, no doubt, a very interesting time uh, to be playing in the insurance space. For more on that, I want to bring on our first guest today, uh, Brian Meredith, uh, UBS and Research Managing Director and North American Insurance Analyst. Uh, joins us on the show now. And Brian, I mean, you just heard Warren Buffett's thoughts on the insurance space right there. Interesting to note the $2.5 billion that he talked about in terms of return to policyholders at GEICO. How do you weigh that kind of cost there on that side, plus the benefits of, of fewer accidents on the road out there? What's the pro-con shakeout right now in the insurance space on the auto front? Yeah, I would say the, 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 the credits he's giving or the reduced reduction in premium is giving is probably not gonna to be to the level that you've actually seen the, the drop in accidents. I mean, we just look at the first quarter alone and we're only talking about kind of really where March is where the shelter in place thing started. Um, you had close to a 6% drop in accidents. Let's take that and roll that into the second quarter. Think about the magnitude of potential drops in kind of accidents out there. It could be 40, 50%. So um, the actual profit benefit, I think will outweigh the 15% reduction in premiums for for Geico, um, you know, granted, it's great that he's getting it back. A lot of other insurance companies are doing the same thing. They're doing it a different way as far as credits on your kind of monthly um, uh, premiums. Yeah, and I mean, it's obviously a large piece of the insurance pie here, and we think about autos. But outside of that, uh, Warren Buffett did weigh in on some of those other insurance giants who might be less focused on autos and maybe more on the underwriting of businesses that might be impacted by what we're seeing play out in coronavirus. On a negative side, you know, the positives of not driving uh, in a few accidents is one thing. But on the other side, you talk about commercial and, and peril there for insurance to think about business interruptions. He was saying that Berkshire wasn't necessarily uh, overly exposed to that side of things, uh, but he did mention other insurers might be. So when you look at that, who outside of that world uh, might be most impacted there? And what do you make of the way that, that some people might be a little bit more exposed on that front? 
And that's, that's clearly one of the more controversial areas right now in the insurance industry is this whole concept of business interruption coverage. And basically what it basically is in a property insurance policy, or as he mentioned, in a commercial multi-parallel policy, there's this element where um, if your building is physically damaged or something happens, um, an insurance company, you can buy a limit, insurance company will sell you a limit where it basically reimburses you for expenses that you would have incurred in that time frame and some lost profits. Now, the key here is one, you're supposed to have a physical damage to your building. And the question that will be litigated going forward is, is COVID-19 a physical damage to an actual establishment or building? And therefore, can you collect this business interruption coverage? Additionally, there's a number of insurance companies that have specific exclusions for virus or pandemic in their policies. Be much harder for a business to actually collect if that's in your policy. But I think what Buffett was trying to say here was that with respect to Berkshire Hathaway, um, they do have these physical damage triggers that you've got to have in your policies. Um, they may have some co policies out there that have that an endorsement that basically says, yes, you have coverage in the event there's a pandemic. He didn't give anything as far as how much there is there, um, but yeah. he said it's relatively small. So probably not a big, a big, uh, a big issue for Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah, he also said that he was open to getting into it. Of course, we saw them uh, underwrite interesting insurance policies in the aftermath of 9-11 when there weren't a lot of people who were willing to write that. Berkshire kind of in a unique camp uh, in its own right there when you think about the, the cash that it has to underwrite some of these things and the risks that they're willing to take. Could look risky on the outside, but he seemed to be into the idea of underwriting that. But he also was asked about the idea of the industry, uh, the insurance industry in the environment of negative interest rates he seemed like he was a little stumped on that just by the fact that he's been stumped by negative interest rates since they've become a thing in, in Europe and abroad. But when you look into that, I mean, it is interesting considering the fact that the insurance industry makes money off the float of that on the front end uh, and invests here. But when you look at negative interest rates, what would be the impact of that if they were to come here in the U.S. on the insurance industry? And how might that impact uh, the names like Berkshire? Well, I think you got to separate it between life insurance and property casualty insurance. The property casualty insurance businesses, which he's referring to with Geico and some of his commercial insurance businesses, remember, they've got two forms of profitability coming in. It's investment income off their investment portfolios, and they're heavily invested, most companies, in um, fixed income securities, although Berkshire Hathaway uses a lot for common equities. But there's also the underwriting profit component. You're trying to, the premiums that you take in being more than the losses and the expenses you're paying out. And one thing that's interesting about this industry right now is we're in what we call a firmer hard market in commercial insurance. That means that prices are going up because a lot of commercial insurance companies looked at the profitability of their business over the last 12 to 18 months or 24 months and said, it's not enough. We need to charge more money because one, interest rates are so low as it is already, we need to charge more for our basic product to earn a good acceptable return you know, on capital on it. So that's important. Plus, they also perceive that the cost of goods sold in the business is already going up a little bit with, with this concept of what we call social inflation kind of coming into insurance uh, losses. So, so what I would say there is that in the PNC insurance business, negative interest rates, yeah, it's not good for return on equity because obviously it's part of your earning stream. But you can offset some of that with just charging more for your insurance product and generating a better running profit. Life insurance, on the other hand, much more challenging. I mean, as if as if there weren't already enough challenges out there to, to consider all the unknowns at this point when we think about the virus itself, the spreading there when business goes back to usual. On top of that, what could be happening in the, uh, the interest rate environment as well? A lot of unknowns out there uh, to consider here. But Brian Meredith, appreciate you taking the time uh, and remarking on all that Warren Buffett had to say on the insurance front. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.